Nathan. Ching. We're talking about the short sword of the spear today. Let's get into that. <laughs> Hey, I'm Andrea Warnock. I'm Nathan Warnock. And you joined us for Family Friday on the Marriage by Design podcast. And this is a time where we get to talk to you about God's design for family and how the Bible calls us to raise a family and how we do that practically. We're talking about the armor of God right now. And That's Nathan's right. looking at me like I'm a crazy lady because I'm yielding a sword. I love it. I'm just jealous that I don't get to hold that while we're having <laughs> our talk. So we <laughs> are on the last piece of armor today, which is the sword of the spirit. Yeah, not actually really armor. I mean, a weapon. Yes. It's a, yes, right. Our weapon. That's right. Which is great. That's, that's awesome. We, <clears throat> so we have, if you have not joined us, I would love for you to go back and kind of check this series out from the beginning. We're talking about Hebrews... Uh, chapter Not six. Hebrews, Ephesians. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Nathan's in the Whoa. wrong book. We're in Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 18 or 20. And that's where it talks about the armor of God. Right. So there's several pieces of armor that we've already talked about. And <laughs> are you in the right place now? Yes, I am. And um, <clears throat> then this is the last piece of armor or our offensive weapon, our, the sword of the spirit. So, Nathan, you want to read that to us? Sure. So, we have tried to read from kind of a different version uh, over the various episodes. So, we read from the ESV. We've read from the the NLT. And I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. So, like I said the first time, Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10, says, In conclusion, be strong in the Lord, be empowered through your union with him, Draw your strength from him, that strength which his boundless might provides. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavy-armed soldier which God supplies, that you may be able successfully to stand up against all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For we're not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the despotisms, against the powers, against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spirit forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural sphere. Therefore, put on God's complete armor, that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day of danger, and having done all the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place. Stand therefore, hold your ground, having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity and of moral rectitude and right standing with God. Then having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, the promptness, and the readiness produced by the good news of the gospel of peace. Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit wields, which is the word of God. Pray at all times, on every occasion and in every season in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Cool. Yeah, that gives you a little bit, a different taste of, of, yeah, aversion. It's more wordy. Yeah, it is. Well, the purpose of the Amplified Version is that it takes the original Greek in this and case uses. and says, okay, what is everything this yeah. word might have meant? Right. Um, so that we kind of get a complete picture there, which is great. It is. So. Yeah, it's fun. So that's Ephesians 6, uh, 10 through 18. Yeah, so we've talked about the belt of truth. Yep. The breastplate of righteousness. Right. Uh, the shoes of the gospel of peace. Right. The shield of faith. Helmet. Helmet of salvation, you and bet. now the last piece, the sword of the spirit. If only we had a visual aid here for people that are watching. And sound effects, ching. <laughs> Actually, this do does that. make. What? A sound uh, no, effect. it doesn't. No, it yes, doesn't. It does. Oh, what? Yeah, you have to turn. Oh, oh, the batteries are done. That's why I turned it off, but it does. So it doesn't make a shing. It makes a sh 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 sh. sh no, sh- if the batteries are working, it makes Got a it. shing. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so if you'll notice, the armor that we have on, well, a few things about that. First of all, a lot of 
a lot of that talks about stand firm and the armor that we have on um you know covers our body and then we have the shield which helps to extinguish the flames yep from the enemy and the helmet which protects our head um and now the sword and but our backsides are not, are not covered we don't right. have any it's important we don't have any um anything covering our backs and that's because we're supposed to stand in spiritual attack we're supposed to stand in the battle and battle that's that's right this was a a a trademark of the roman centurion armor they had all of this armor on the front but when they turned around it was just the leather straps holding it all together which doesn't seem like a very wise strategic decision Unless you recognize that it was a foundational part of the Roman Empire that you never retreat from battle, period. You don't do it. Right. So as an as another deterrent to prevent their soldiers from... from Getting uh, scared and yeah, from turning sur- around. Yeah, from turning around and retreating. If you did that, you would have to at, at least walk backwards. <laughs> um, because if you turned around, you were all of a sudden open to every attack. Yeah. Yeah, so it's important to to note that we're we are called into battle right. and we are called to fight and and not just take the arrows that are hurled at us, but fight against the enemy. That's right. You know, we're not just there to kind of stand our ground and deal with what we're what's hurled at us, but the Lord has given us a weapon to use. Right. And that and he t- says that that's the sword of the spirit right this matters practically for us too because it's, it can be easy to be tempted as a christian couple to go hey let's just homeschool our kids we'll have this small church body we're a part of and then it'll just be we'll hang out in our house and we'll that's what we're gonna do mm-hmm. and it's just gonna be our family and god and our little church body and that's gonna be it yep um and while that sounds good it is a we're derelict in our duties to go fight the fight right um, against the enemy. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, so why is it called the sword of the spirit? So, um, so in this translation, the ESV, ESV I think is what this is. Uh, it says, and take, uh, let's see, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So, right. it's called the sword of the spirit, but it's saying it's the word of God. Right. It's this right here so why is it called the sword of the spirit well the spirit the the holy spirit gave the word of god as inspiration to man who then wrote it down so it's it's a a um yeah a gift of the spirit to us right so there's 66 books in the bible yep and oftentimes we When we read a book, as you should when you read the Bible, to ask, okay, who was the author? Mm -hmm. And while this can be semantics, it is rightful for us to say, like the gospel according to Matthew, well, who was the author? Well, not Matthew. The the author author was the Holy Spirit through revelation to Matthew. Right. um, Who then wrote it down. Right. Yep. So it's called the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the spirit, because he gave us the The scriptures. Right. So... And, and it's so important in with this offensive weapon that we have to really know that the word of God is the word of God. It's the words of the Lord. Yes, it was written, physically written down by men, but it's not man's words. It's, the, it's God's words. Um, so we have to be able to truly believe that to use our weapon well. Right. And, and really understand what the Bible is and... Um, study it, know how to use it. <laughs> yeah. So that's an important, that's an important part because if you think that, it, if you just think that the word of God is, yeah, some inspired word, but you know, it's, it's just some good stories in there yeah. or then your offense, then your weapon is really kind of just a noodle. Yeah. I mean, th- do you, is that what you want? If you're going into battle, do you want a sword where, of the blade is sharp, (laughs) right? Or, or 40% or 70% of the blade is sharp in some places, right? Right. Well, when you go to use it to cut down your enemy, maybe it'll work. 
Right. Right. But maybe it won't. And then your enemy's coming back at you. So 2 Timothy, in talking about what is scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for trading in righteousness, mm. that the man of God or woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I think it's only man of God. <laughs> that mankind may be complete, equipped for every good work. So it's saying, <laughs> yes, all scripture, every word That's of right. scripture is breathed out by God. It was it was given by God. It's, That's right. It has many, there's many reasons for teaching, reproof, correction, training, and righteousness that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Right. It's a tool. That's right. It's, it's a tool. That's what it's saying, equipped. So. It's important. Um, That's, you're right, babe. David Guzik in some of his commentary says, that not only did the Spirit give us the scriptures, but he also made them alive to us. Mm-hmm. And he equips us with the right thrust of the sword at the right <laughs> time. And I thought that was such a good word picture. That's great. That that um, we don't go into battle blindly right. and we don't go, we shouldn't go not using, not knowing how to use right. our weapon, but rather allowing allowing the scripture to prepare us. And our relationships with the Lord to prepare us to know when to thrust that weapon. Right. And there's, and I know we're going to get to it here in a little bit, but there's a perfect biblical story of Jesus that aligns perfectly mm-hmm. with that right, right thrust of the sword at the right time mm-hmm. that we can read to our kids and really help them see how this is. It really was used as a sword. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So using a weapon takes practice and skill. Yep. Uh, it's not something that you just know how to use it when you have it in your hand. Right. So that's something that we've, that we can talk to our kids about is, you know, when you're for older kids, maybe, maybe they've had a chance to use a bow and arrow or a gun or whatever. Anyway, we'll hold on. We'll get, we'll get into that in a, yeah. in a minute, but just remembering as adults, it takes it takes practice to learn how to use a weapon and learn how to use it well sure. and learn how to use it against your enemy yep. um, in battle. And yep. so we need to be faithful to um, know not only our enemy, but know how to use our weapon against them. Right. Yeah, right. That's okay, right. so then how do we teach our kids about the sword of the spirit? Again, some of that teaching is to know... What do we say to our kids about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? Yep. Um, and for us to have a really good idea of what that is. So. And there's tons of, uh, if, if you're a, you know, you like to look things up on the Google machine. <laughs> on the internet? On the internet. There's some really, I mean, you can just uh, Google the progression of the sword over time and find some cool like history channel type videos yeah. and uh, pages where you can show your kids like, okay, some of the earliest daggers are, are not even, we're not even sure if it was used for fighting or if it was just used for like hunting or what, but it's like literally just a big rock that they banged against something until it got worn down into sharp edges, mm-hmm. right? All the way up to... You know, the modern sword, which is so perfectly well balanced that you can hold it on one finger and it will perfectly balance along sure. your finger and the whole progression in between. And there's some really cool history there as far as, well, why did we make certain changes to this sword? And can lead right into talking with our kids about. How are we going to hone and tailor the sword that we're making, that the Lord's giving us? Um, How are we going to tailor that to our own temptations and situations? Right. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, Yeah, so the important part of the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and our kids is making sure that they have a really good understanding of what is Scripture. Right. And... How did we get it? How did we get to having this book here? And mm-hmm. and so there's some really great... The Bible Project has some videos about mm-hmm. what is the Bible and how did we get here. Mm-hmm. Um, this is another great book, Keeping Kids On... We've talked about it before. Keeping Your Kids On God's Side. And there's a whole section about the Bible. And it talks about... 
some conversations to have, like how were the books in the Bible selected? Why were books left out of the Bible? How do we know we can trust the Bible's authors? How do we know the Bible we have today says what the authors originally wrote? All that kind of stuff. Yep. And this is this would be really great to go through yourself as mm-hmm. the parent mm-hmm. to be able to, with younger kids, give them little nuggets. But with older kids, go through this book with them. Right. And talk about about the Bible with them. You know, for them to truly trust that the Bible is the word of God is something that God's going to have to do in their heart. But as parents, it's on us to help them understand that. That's good, babe. So it's good. Highly having, recommend having book. a bunch of those discussions, and it's not a one-time thing. It's a consistent throughout raising your kids, talking about not just hey, let's get into the word. But what is this that we're reading? What right. do we really believe about the Bible? Let's just get go back to the basics of what it what is this book? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's um, great. Uh, so we talked about Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Talk yep. to your kids about that. All scriptures God breathes. Yep. And then Hebrews four twelve. Um, I have it on my phone here. Hold on. It says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, mm-hmm. piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Mm. So that's not necess- that's talking about that the Bible is a sword, but right. not not in us using it in battle, but rather it pierces, it, it divides right. between truth and, and untruth. Right. So, right. discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart. I love that. It's living and active. Right. It is not a dead book. It's not written and now we moved on. That's right. So, that's Hebrews 4.12. Okay, so we'll talk about Jesus being tempted in the desert. Yes. So, I'll the, the this story is great. Let's do it. Okay. So, uh, while Jesus was here living here on earth... There was a time where he went away to the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. It was right before he started his public ministry. So he's a 30-year-old dude. Yep. Uh, and yes, he, the Holy Spirit calls him into the wilderness. Kind of as a preparation, it seems like. Right. Yep. yep. So he's by himself, and he has no food, and he's in the elements and all that. So, you know, at this point, he's probably being very tempted with, giving up physical this, things yes yeah, giving sure. up this time in the desert alone yep anyway so um matthew 4 1 through 11 says then jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil <laughs> he was led there to go into spiritual battle yeah that says something about our walk with the lord yeah that sometimes if you feel like lord why do you lead me into difficult situations and someone well-meaning might go well the lord doesn't lead us into difficult times well he led his own con- son into difficult it's contrary to right. matthew 4 now jesus god himself does not tempt people right james yep. is clear about that the book of james but but he does lead us into times of difficulty right and after fasting 40 days and 40 nights he was hungry and the tempter came which would be satan or one of his minions came and said to him if you are the son of god command these stones to become loaves of bread but he answered, it is written, man shall not live by, by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again, it's written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So Jesus was led into difficult time by the Lord and he was tempted by Satan and what did he use in in that temptation? What did he use as um, an offensive weapon against the enemy? The, the word Bible, of God, specifically from taken from Deuteronomy. Right. He used words from from the the scriptures to fight his enemy. 
Yeah. Y- you know what's an important thing for us to remind our kids about that too? You know what it doesn't say? Satan said this, and then Jesus dug through the scrolls until he found the applicable verse and right. then he said it. Right. Like, Satan said it, and Jesus, having memorized this ahead of time, went, no, because here's what the Bible says. Here's what the scriptures say. Yep. Right? It's not just enough to know that the Bible's the word of God. We have to know the words of God. And beyond that, know when they're being used incorrectly. Yeah, so, true. So Satan was using the word of God to tempt Jesus. Right. And he was using it incorrectly. And Jesus knew scriptures well enough to know, uh-uh, you're you're twisting that. Right. And that is not what that is that is not what was meant or whatever, you know? Exactly so right. so he knew that he knew the Bible. So the the important part here is we can't just expect, oh, when I'm going through a hard time, then I'll get into my then I'll get into the word. Then right. I'll get serious about what the what how the Bible can help me. No way. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared. Again, Jesus knew when to thrust that sword right. and how, and he did it at the right time. And he was prepared to use his weapon. He knew how to use his weapon, the word of God. Right. Against his right. enemy. And we've got to be prepared. We can't expect that I'm going to know how to use the Bible against my enemy if I'm not prepared to use it. Yeah. So... Super yeah. important and having those discussions with your kids. Really good. Really um, good. And then the last thing that I would say about about this is um, oftentimes our words can be a sword. The Bible talks about um, our tongue being a sword. Yes. So I'm just going to take this sword example for a minute. But turn a little bit so um proverbs twelve eighteen says the words of the reckless pierce like swords but the tongue of the wise brings healing um we need to be careful that that we are not using our tongues as swords against somebody else yep as that may be a spiritual battle for them yep that may lead them into spiritual battle or that we're not using the word of the lord that's incorrectly to speak into somebody's life and using our quote weapon against another person Mm. um in spiritual battle because we're saying something that's not true right yeah you you can't be having friendly fire right with the with the sword right Um, and what that last point you just said super super important there's a lot of spiritual abuse that goes on out there with Church leaders, pastors, well-meaning people who are using the Word of God out of context in ways that are meant to manipulate or cut down or humiliate or whatever. Um, And we've got to, first of all, we've got to know the Word of God well enough to be able to recognize when that happens and go knock it off. Um, And it takes... A special boldness and a special commitment to seeing the word of God used as it was written to intervene with someone who might be a leader in your church or a leader in your small group or whatever who's doing this. But it's really easy for well-meaning people, let alone ill-meaning people, but well-meaning people to just fall into a habit of using one or two verses out of context Mm -hmm. and can really do damage to other people you know, God fearing people around that are just trying to learn. Yeah. So in regards to your kids, keep my suggestion here would be to, um, keep a good finger on, on what they're learning in regards to the Bible. Yeah. What they're hearing, what's being poured into them because a lot of whack theology is out there Mm. and our kids grab onto a lot of that sort of sort of stuff so um being careful too with the words that are coming out of your mouth towards them and and their mouths towards others and not Mm -hmm. using our tongues as swords um against another but having that discussion about you know that that's hurtful to somebody and pierces like a sword yep when we use our tongues in that way um 
and being careful to use the Bible. Even our kids can, you know, if you're just listening, there's been quite a few times that one of our kids has said, well, the Bible says this, but they're missing a piece of it or they're not using it in context or whatever. And just having that discussion about, well, let's dig into that a little bit more. Let's see what it really is. So we got it. Let's open it up and see. So the important part there is, as parents, we've got to be so steeped in the word that we can recognize those things. Right. And we're not going to be perfect at it, but we have to know the we have to know the word, right? And, and be help to be the gatekeepers of false things that our kids are believing or right. or hearing about the Bible. Right, and practically that that's it sounds daunting, but as a practical matter, get yourself a Bible. Just get find, into it. Find yourself a reading, some kind of reading plan or, you know, something that will kind of help you cut it into manageable chunks and then just start reading it just, yourself. Yeah. Just be faithful right. with it and the right. Lord will be faithful. Exactly. For you right. Good it. stuff, babe. What a good series. Yeah. On, that's fun. on the armor of God. That's great. That thanks, for, thanks for kind of leading us. In sure. That. I appreciate that. Yeah. Happy to. Well, thanks for joining us this Thursday, Friday. We always make a little bit of, little bit of a joke about that. That's but right. Thanks for joining us on Family Friday with the Armor of God. Come back on Sunday. You can talk with us live Sunday, 830 Central Time. We hop on and answer a few questions and have some discussions about current event things, which is great. Yeah. Um, and then back for another Marriage Monday after that. So That's thanks right. for joining us. And remember, God is for your family. Hey, thanks for joining us on Marriage by Design. If you were impacted by this video, like it by hitting the thumbs up below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And once you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can be notified when new episodes release. Excellent. Also, one of the huge pillars of our show is interactivity between us and you. So we would love you to comment down in the comments below if you have thoughts about this video or if you have questions or other things you'd like to like to see considered in the future. In addition, if you'd like, you can email us. That's marriagebydesignpodcast at gmail.com. We're also on Instagram at marriagebydesignpodcast, or you can find us on Facebook by searching Marriage by Design Podcast. Finally, if you want to, you can tweet at us. We do have a Twitter account that is at marriagexdesign. Thanks, and have a great day.